So last time on Jerry McParlin' Rebel with the Gods, Jerry started working on a potion to kill a federal agent. It's going really well. So far we got Coca-Cola, a strange root, some mints, and a necklace. Yeah, I don't quite know how all this is gonna work. Maybe we're gonna do like the menthols thing and then throw the necklace at him and then beat him with the root or something. All right, so let's have Jared tell us what he needs for the next part of his demon killing potion. A teacher's knowledge. All right, that sounds kind of sinister. It almost sounds like you gotta remove a brain of a teacher. But now you don't. That's a different game. A zombie game. Instead, you head over to the school here and solve puzzles. Well, damn, this school is quiet as a church. Well, anyway, Jared kind of awkwardly walks down this hallway until he encounters a locker. And you can tell it's an important locker because it's the only one that's different from the rest of them. Look at that. The key is in the lock. Now, what do we have here? Hmm. That's just a fishing rod. I'll take the key as well. So, Jerry can, like, see through the locker and take the items through the locker all while the locker is closed. And, again, Jerry is not the demon. I think I have an idea why the shaman wanted to recruit him, because the dude got powers. Hey, Fred. How did you make it here so fast, coming all the way from the pawn shop? Ed is at the pawn shop, Terry. I'm Ted, by the way. Okay, Ed. What are you doing here? Yeah, Jerry, you stole the man's money and you tried to push his car off a cliff. You kind of just being a dick to this poor man at this point. What do you have against Ted? I'm starting to think that Jerry might be a bit jelly of Ted because he hangs out the diner all the time and he's afraid he's trying to pick up Luna. Well, Mary, I repair these aesthetic doors. When Mrs. Bitters was murdered, they got damaged. And now I can't even open them, not even with my screwdriver. Can I help you somehow? No, I know I have a spare nut somewhere. I just can't find it. Oh, look, I found it. It's in the classroom right next to where he's standing. Hmm, that might not be very bright. Exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Whatever makes you happy, Ed. Ted! Right. Yeah, the animation's all kind of messed up right there. Or maybe just everyone in this town has some amazing psychic abilities. But nevertheless, Jerry can get a screwdriver now, because he'll need that for a future puzzle. So he heads back into the classroom, because there's still a lot more stuff to be found in there. It's supposed to contain teaching materials. All I need to open it is the right key. Well damn, where do you think we can find the right key? It's gotta be somewhere in this classroom, right? Because up to now, for the most part, the puzzles have made a certain amount of sense. Basically, all the really important items are more or less in the area you'd expect them to be, or maybe not for this one. Yeah, the key to open up this little locker in this classroom is located all the way in the post office. I'm not kidding you which is the only other location you can go into in the town. So, there's like a theater and a post office. And that's, uh, although they call it a mail office in this game because the dirty Europeans, this is America, goddammit, we call it the post office because that's what it is called over here in America. But nevertheless, we got the key now and we leave the vacant town that has all these buildings and I'm sure are filled with exciting things during the day. But it's dead night, so I guess that's an excuse. But oh well, we open up the cabinet and we get some items we need to solve some puzzles. Let's see what's in there. Well, Jerry appears a bit too shy to tell us what he's picked up, but I'll tell you what it is exactly. It's a whole lot of red herrings. Yeah, there's a couple of items you pick up right here that are completely and utterly useless. And it's pretty much the only time in this game that I can remember that this happens. So, yeah, red herrings. I mean, do they taste any different than regular herrings? Because I just like herrings in general. This could prove useful sometime. Jerry needs to go ahead and take this chair and prop it up against the blackboard. Then he needs to climb on top of the chair and unfasten this vent. And then he notices, hey, there's a book in there, and it's important. Ah, the teacher's lounge. When I look through the mirror hanging on the wall over there, I can spot something beneath the air shaft that looks like an altar. A seemingly sacred book with a huge metal buckle lies on the altar. This book is giving me eerie and mystical vibes. It seems to glow from within. And because it's a weird locked away object in a different room that we can't see, Jared wants it. Naturally. 
I mean, why doesn't Jerry just walk around to the teacher's lounge to try to unlock the door or something like that? Uh, no, he can't do that because it's the only door he can interact with and it's the only area he can go into in this school beside the hallway. So we got no choice other than to make do with what we got here. So yeah, basically, you need to get that damn book out of there. So how the hell are you going to do that? Why, it's easy. You just follow these simple steps. Take the wire and wrap it around the screws. Then take that wired wrapped screw and add a battery onto it. And apparently this makes Jerry sweaty. I don't know, it's weird. Maybe we gotta think for batteries. And then all you need to do is add it to the fishing pole. And then you just apply it to the hole. And that's it. You can fish out the item. Yay. Let's have a look and find out what it could be. What? The ultimate game guide, complete with a built-in universal walkthrough. <sighs> It's gotta be something really important. Whenever a problem occurred, our teacher opened this book. So what Jerry just said was very confusing to me because it sounded like he had no idea what he was talking about and then the same sentence it sounded like he knew what he was talking about. It would be a bit like me saying, I have no idea what beer is I make beer and drink it. And in a heartbeat, he knew the answer. Wait a minute. The Meaning of Life, page 42. References. Flux Capacitor, John F. Kennedy, Zach McCracken, The Bielfeld Conspiracy. Very interesting. Very interesting. Does that book have like Super Bowl scores? Because Jerry, you're about to become a very rich man. Oh, Super Bowl hasn't started yet. But in 10 odd years, when it starts, you're gonna be a very rich man. Well, not at the first one. But you know, late, at some point you're gonna get rich from sports gambling. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, Jerry now has a book that contains all the answers to everything, including stuff that hasn't happened yet. So he obviously is gonna throw in his potion to kill a demon. Other than, you know, maybe just keeping a damn book and trying to solve all the world's problems because i'm pretty sure he can find some other form of teacher's knowledge maybe just get a book from the damn library if all he wants a book like get how to teach or teach it for dummies but oh well the world's damned and we all know it so let's go hear what jerry has to find next what was that again hopi yoni root water to keep demons at bay a sacred yanto root is thoroughly cooked and doused with black soda stock and the breath of a songstress a parental secret a teacher's knowledge, the heart of the phoenix. The heart of the phoenix. Well, that sounds a bit obtuse. What the hell could they be referring to? Oh, this plane out here. And by heart of the phoenix, they mean the keys to it, which really isn't the heart. If anything, that's like what? Not the mouth, it's, it's the starter. It starts up the phoenix. The heart of the phoenix would be the engine, but I guess that's kind of hard to put into soup. But oh well. Jimmy gotta get up to his rapscallion ways and use the screwdriver on the plane. Now I know you get no interaction thing like you do with the rest of the items you can interact with, but yeah, I think they just forgot to make the hotspot work the way it was supposed to at this point in the game. But whatever, let's get ready to listen to some funny slapstick. Yeah, yeah, comedy. Huh. I don't remember the plane to be this angular. Not this dark either. Ouch! Ah! Damn! Damn! Oh, I can't remember this corner. Oh! Oh, my knee! Stop. Stop? Why stop? Who's there? Uh, what's going on? I am Mossy Mossborn. Mossy Mossborn? Yeah, Mossy Mossborn. Lord of all bats and bat-like creatures. Oh, hey, it's the same voice actor as the shaman. Except he's like a magical vampire bat. I mean, we don't see him, so he could be anything. He could be a docking flame and bile of noodles. He thought I was going to swear there. But yeah, nevertheless, this thing wants a pie. I'm not kidding you. It wants a pie because, well, who doesn't want pie? And rhubarb pie in particular. I like rhubarb pie. I could go for a nice rhubarb pie now, in fact, but I still got a game to get through. So yeah, Jerry got to find a way to make a pie. So fortunately enough for him, if he goes back to the junkyard boys, he finds out that, oh my God, they have that one particular pie that a vampire dude wants. But they're like, oh, wait a minute. We just ate the last piece. Ah. But Fred, the guy who hangs out with the Mr. B dude, he apparently knows how to make a really mean rhubarb pie that's exactly what the vampire man wants. So let's go catch up with the game there. Fred, you can bake. Of course, Jerry, I love baking. Would you bake a rhubarb pie for me using Aunt Agatha's recipe? Oh, I'd love to, Jerry, but... I'm out of that sweetener 2B, which is essential for baking that pie. But if you can get me some of it, I would just love to bake that pie for you. 
That's pretty straightforward. I guess you can just go down to the grocery store or something, but I'll wait. Probably close at the 50s. Everything probably closed at 6 o'clock. So it looked like Jerry going on to make this from scratch. So how the hell is he going to do that? Why well, he goes back to the school and conveniently in one of these desks is the formula for sweetener 2B. And then he just uses it on the chemistry set that's hanging out here. And apparently Jerry is some sort of chemist and he makes the damn sugar and is even able to put it into these like purple little packages and then you just give it to Fred and here's what he has to say about that. All right, Jerry. I'll bake that pie for you. Next time we meet, it'll be ready. And by next time you meet, he just means go out of this area, then come right back in and, oh, wow, the pie's done. Jerry, here's a pie for you. Then just go back and give it to the vampire man, and, oh, yeah, you get the keys and give it to Luna. That problem is solved. Yay! So now, Jerry boy, tell us, what is the last and final, and I know I said the same thing twice, ingredient that we need. What was that again? Hopi Yoni root water to keep demons at bay. A sacred Yanto root is thoroughly cooked and doused with black soda stock, and the breath of a songstress, a parental secret, the teacher's knowledge, the heart of the phoenix, and the message that came flying. The message that came flying, so what, can we just like write a letter on a paper airplane and then just fly it across the diner and be done with it? <laughs> no, of course not. You see, Jerry's now got to become a mailman. Uh, why, you ask? Well, because, um, well, he doesn't know it yet, but there is a piece of air mail here at the post office, so that counts as the message that came flying. But yeah, he just can't become a mailman because, you know, you just can't become a mailman like that. So instead he has to go to Mr. B and ask him, I won't be a mailman because mr b apparently runs the post office which never mind let's go listen to what mr b has to say about jerry becoming a mailman mr b i want to become a mailman not a firefighter firefighter yeah a job with responsibilities but i don't want to be a firefighter i want to be a mailman not a pirate i heard there's a vacancy a pirate in Barnet Springs? I was trying to figure out if that was a Monkey Island reference or not. It's been a while since I played the games. I'm just teasing you a little, because I always thought you wanted to become a rock star. Uh, my career is put on hold for now. Okay, Jerry. After all, I do owe you a favor. If you can prove you're a reliable mailman, I'll grant you a mailman license. A reliable mailman? Yes, Jerry. Here's a letter for the Spinellis. If you manage to deliver it, you get your official mailman license. All right, that sounds pretty damn simple. We just go over to the Spinelli's, give them the letter, and all. wait, of course they ain't gonna take it like that. It's a little bit more complicated. Turns out they're afraid to bill. So they'll only take the letter on the condition you can also give them some hair dye or gel or whatever. Nevertheless, it's right down the basement of the club. Ah, oh, here it is. We found it. It's Jimmy Lash's hair grease. Who knew Jerry's rival would get him out of the jam, or at least one of his fabulous products. Anyway, you go back to the Spinelli's and you give it to them, and they're like, oh damn son hey hey wait a minute the actual item we wanted in this isn't in here yeah the actual greasy part of the hair grease so damn jerry out of luck what are he gonna do other than wander around the map for a while and talk to everyone and try to figure out what the missing item was or you can just go to mr b and tell him that you can't deliver the mail so jerry did the spinellas accept the letter unfortunately no i knew it i'd bet the grease from jimmy lash's hair cast set on you failing if I hadn't lost it all. Uh, well, that's a rather particular thing to bet. Old Mr. B informs us that old Ted has it. You know, the guy who works at the school. So you go over to Ted and you're like, yo, I want the hair grease. And he's like, well, let's just go listen in, shall we? Hey, Ted, do you have Jimmy Lash's grease? Yeah. Can I have it? Nope. Wait, why don't we trade? Trade? Yeah, Jerry. We both know you snaked my lucky corns. Me? I would never. Carry. You can't deny it. I don't want them all back. The one I do want back, though, is my gilded lucky dime from 1938. You know, the one that always comes back to me. Hmm. I don't know. I think I should keep it for later use. Okay, Jerry, that's a really weird thing to say. But yeah, it's pretty simple to get the coin back. All you need to do is go to the Coke machine, use the magnet on it, because as Simon the Sorcerer said, we all know that gold isn't magnetic. So yeah, Jerry gives the coin back to Ted, Ted gives him the grease, you give the grease to the boys, and oh my god, you go to Mr. B and he's like, you a mailman now. 
So you go to the post office and get the package, and then you get the package of Luna, and oh my god, we have all the items to make the evil potion to kill the federal agent. Well, let's go catch up there, shall we? Great! At last, I've got all the ingredients I need. That's great, Jerry. We finally made it, then. Oh, jeez, Luna, don't sound too excited. Uh, not quite yet, Luna. Now, it's your turn. You know that everything has to be cooked by a Native American shaman, don't you? Well, Jerry, not to be nitpicky, but they mentioned Hopi earlier. I'm just saying, have you forgotten your own game's plot, or are you just speaking in broad generalizations like some guy on the internet? I'm great. Luna, he's on tour. He wasn't hiding. Do you, do you not know what the difference is? Luna, I hate to have to tell you this because you're a grown-ass woman, but there's a difference between hiding and being on tour. You see, when you're hiding, you don't want to be found. When you're on tour, you want to be found. It's pretty much the opposite thing of hiding, actually. After years in hiding, Jerry McPartland shows up again, and all he brings is work. Come on. A boom chicka bow bow a boom chicka bow bow Oh, no, not that type of work. Come on. Here's your Yanto root water. Great. And now I have to... Uh... Yes, Jerry. The ghosts of the ancestors say that the time has come for you to face your demons. But... But, uh... There's no other way, Jerry. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's kind of a weird transition. It's like, hey, Jerry, go kill a guy for us with this mysterious potion we just handed to you and didn't really explain. Have fun. But hey, at least Jerry's getting hyped about it. Okay. For a beautiful lady who happens to be my first love, and for my brother Bobby, and even a little bit for Wick. A and a little bit for my parents as well. After all, Bobby had a point. Apparently our parents didn't leave us without a reason. And yes, somehow I'm eager to know what happened back then too. So after Jared just boldly proclaims all of his motivations, I know it's kind of weird to think of killing his demon's going to uncover what happened to his parents, because if the demon knows anything and is dead, how the hell going to tell him? But whatever, Jared walks into the motel room and discovers that he can only interact with one item, and that's a nightstand, and he opens it, and he discovers the demon has taken pictures of Luna. So obviously that means demon wants Luna. So he races back to the diner. Oh no, Luna's gone. Obviously the demon has her and Wick's been rendered unconscious. But fortunately for Wick, the thing to make him conscious is laying right at his feet. Son, that vile demon got me good. Yeah, the demon must have gotten Wick pretty good. After all, he can't move. It looks like his spine's broken or rigor mortis is setting in. Now, he's finally ready to manifest himself in our world. But to do that... He needs the sacred tomahawk of our ancestors, which lies on our consecrated grounds. The demon can't set foot there. He kidnapped Luna to force me to enter the sacred grounds and complete the rites of incantation, so he could get the tomahawk and manifest fully in our world. He would become powerful. Too powerful. I don't know why the demon just never bothered to pay someone to steal the tomahawk for him, but whatever. Jerry's obviously gotta chase after this demon and kill him and save Luna and have a happy ending, you know? Ah, oh, damn it! I can't see anything! Now, right here is one of the most complicated puzzles in the game. And right here is one of the most complicated puzzles in the game. It's a multifaceted, complex puzzle involving you having to do a lot of backtracking and really think. And unfortunately, it's randomized, so I can't really just give you a walkthrough for it. Away with it. Or you can just click on the newspaper and Jeffrey removes it. Alright, let's take a good look at this scene. The demon and Luna are standing in the middle of the road. How did they get here? I assume they walk. Luna is pretty far away from the demon, and Jerry is driving a car. Now Jerry, if he had any sense, would just go ahead and try to run over the demon. But no, nah, Jerry got no sense. But neither does the hostage or the demon, because they just stand in the middle of the damn road. Oh well, Jerry hit the billboard. I'll tear your heart out while you watch! Uh, isn't that Luna running away? Damn! You'll never escape my superior mind! <laughs> he said he has a superior mind, yet when he died, Jerry up, he didn't tie his arms up because he's a dummy. So naturally, Jerry uses the only item he can use in this situation, his pocket knife. He's free, and he chases after the demon, and oh my god, they're having a sewer standoff. So Jerry just uses one of the keys in his pocket to unlock the sewer grate. And how this works, for those of you watching this for the walkthrough, is that you need to match up the last number of whatever the sewer grate lock is with a key that shares the same last number. So, for instance, a key with the number 26 will match up with a lock that says 666. It's just the last number that matters. It's really easy stuff. 
You overcame the obstacle? You will fail on the next one! <laughs> damn! 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 Jerry McPartman, I obviously underestimated you, but you'll never break my ultimate barrier! I've gotta say, this is one hot construction. <laughs> and dangerous like hell. Yeah, it's a bunch of magically floating knives that are tied up by rope. They're going after Jerry. I'm just gonna let this one speak for itself. What? 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 Call me a fool, but it seemed like cutting the rope is a terrible idea because these are magically floating knives that are pointing towards Jerry. It seemed like the only thing holding them back from impaling this man a dozen different times was the rope, which he cut, and instead it causes them to fall. How the hell do these magical demon knives work? Oh well. Jerry slowly walks over to the demon and douses him, and yeah, he's dead, right? 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 Okay, you and I both know this ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think spraying me with some Indian dishwater will make me go up in smoke? Well, at least his voice isn't annoying anymore. Oh, you are a worthy opponent, McPartland. And the law of hell dictates that I shall gamble for the soul of a worthy opponent. Let's play a game, McPartland. If I win, your soul is mine. If you win... Well, I will retreat back to my hellish realm and set you and Luna free. Perhaps a rock-off would be a fitting contest for you. <laughs> but not with this game's budget. No, instead, with the demon, you're gonna have to do a chili cook-off. Oh my goodness. I'll be honest with you, after playing through this part of the game, I did make myself some chili because chili is delicious. But why am I talking about what I did? Alright, so, in order to win this chili cook-off and to save Luna, who's kind of awkwardly placed in the middle, the demon does not know how to tie people up. He needs to get like an intern to help him with this. But nevertheless, what you gotta do is you gotta take the Hopiani water and you gotta mix it with the demon's glass of water that's right next to him. And yes, you can do it right in front of its face. No need to distract him because again, this demon pretty dumb. And then you tell the demon that you need to take a tinkle. Because again, he pretty dumb. So you leave, you go to the diner, and you get this Demon X hot sauce thing that's in the kitchen. It's hotter than hell. And then you need to go back to the school, and you need to go ahead and pick up this de-spicer thing that's hanging out on this table. And then you just make the chili. You know, you just take all the ingredients on the table and add it. Then you add the super duper hot hot sauce. And then, well, let's go wait and see what happens. Well, hello there, Mr. Demon. Here's some pretty hot chili made just for you. Very good, McPartland. But you've got to taste mine first. <laughs> Brace yourself for the immediate loss of your soul. Alright, so Jay uses a D spicer on the bowl, and by the way, if you do not already have the hot sauce in the chili the wix magical demon slaying hot sauce inside the chili you're gonna be screwed because as far as i know there's only one d spicer in this whole game and also i have no idea why you just don't put the magical demon killing juice inside the chili that the demon's already gonna eat because the goal is to get this juice inside the demon because well you'll see what happens when he gets the juice inside of him it ain't no goddamn sense Water! <laughs> That's all you've got, weak human. <laughs> it still gets me every time. <laughs> Pop! <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I don't know if that was intentional now, but if it was intentional, that was a stroke of genius. My hero, you saved me. God damn, we don't get all day, Mr. Can't walk on stage quickly enough. I always knew you'd go places, Jerry. 
My visions turned out to be accurate once again. Someone messed up the audio there. Malunga del Talada. May our ancestors grant you healing powers. She will recover in time. How are you feeling, Jerry? Well, I always dreamed of getting on the big stage when I returned to Barnet Springs. But not necessarily in a cooking show. I guess whatever happened is between you and the demon. And whoever has to clean this mess up, probably one of them triplets. Ah, <sighs> okay. All this left me confused. What will you do now? I don't know. I think I'll have to find my brother first. Oh, sequel bait. So that's how Jerry McPartland, a rebel with a cause, ends. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Be uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been some guy that's been overanalyzed adventures, and hopefully I'll see you for the next one. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or whatever your preference may be. Everybody hates you! <laughs> <laughs>